Hello people. Today we're going to talk about this Devel handgun. This is beautiful. It's a uh, it's a Colt Commander manufactured in the 1950s and then customized by a company called Devel Corporation that started in the mid to late 1970s. So a gentleman by the name of Charlie Kelsey, with the help of a now famous firearms instructor, Ken Hackathorn, uh, started this company called Devel. And um, this is what we have. This is an incredible handgun. Now, I don't know that Ken Hackathorn, I don't know how much he had to do with the business itself. I really don't know. That's just something I found out by researching online. I think it was uh, Wikipedia. Um, but Ken probably had a little bit to, to do with helping him uh, decide what, you know, what elements to incorporate into the handgun. I, I don't know, really. I don't know what kind of person Charlie was, uh, but he was certainly a very skilled welder with aluminum. So this is an aluminum frame, and the only way to get this nub on there would be to weld it. And if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to damage this thin wall of aluminum, and, um, and then it'll be even harder to repair. Uh, but the Devel handguns, that you can find will all generally have this nub welded on it. Beautiful. And of course that's to help stabilize the handgun. When you're shooting you put your weak hand index finger in that area and that helps stabilize the gun. It's a very very nice feature that a lot of companies have tried to incorporate into um, factory you know production models uh, but they're a lot more subtle than this uh, they might just be a flat surface or it might have a little horn at the bottom but nothing this dramatic and of course that's what a lot of people uh, they put checkering on here now that's really the big thing to, to customize 1911s and that's uh, very useful, but it's a, a lot easier to do checkering than to do this. So that's, we don't see these little nubs anymore. Notice they did the hand checkering here. It's beautiful. And then this is a hand checkered arched mainspring housing. And they did a great job as well. And then this is a hard chrome finish. Someone asked me if it was nickel. This, this isn't nickel, this is hard chrome. Beautiful. Now, one thing I've, well, three things I've noticed about this handgun is that the trigger has a considerable amount of free travel under no tension of the sear spring. I don't know if that was uh, meant to be that way. I don't know if Char, if that was a, a style Charlie was trying to patent, but <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it seems to me that was just an oversight. And another oversight, certainly an oversight, is this grip safety. It seems to work fine, but it, it really isn't. In order to get the grip safety to come all the way out, you need to pull it out like that. Now that's the full stroke of the grip safety. And that's what the grip safety is meant to do. When you're not gripping the gun, the trigger cannot travel to the rear to drop the hammer. So when we go to grip the gun, consequently what we're doing is we're gripping that area. But this grip safety has a, a very noticeable hard stop 
right there. And I, I, I haven't taken this apart, but I believe what's happening is the bottom toe of the grip safety is knocking against the top rear corner of the mainspring housing. And it's most likely because of the, the hard chrome finish. Hard chrome can add just enough dimension, especially on two different parts, to cause this issue. Now, I don't know if that's the problem or not. Maybe Charlie used two parts that were not original to the Colt. Or maybe this was an original issue from the Colt factory and it was just never identified by by Charlie but either way regardless of why it's that way this is not supposed to be that way you're supposed to have a full motion from from here all the way out so although we're kind of trapped behind the the mainspring housing there pulling the trigger still doesn't result in a drop of the hammer so it's still working as a grip safety it's just when gripping the gun you have to get over that little that hump it, this gun needs to be if this was going to be a carry gun for somebody and I believe that's what this was meant to be not uh, a lot of Devel handguns are, are ported um, for competition and this is not doesn't seem like a competition gun it could 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 have been meant to be that but it seems like a carry gun to me and if it is that feature certainly needs to be changed as does I feel like this this movement of this trigger there's a lot of up and down, a lot of lateral movement, but it's the the forward and aft movement under no spring tension that's concerning to me. And then the third thing that I've noticed is the weight of this trigger. That's pretty heavy. I'm going to guess that's right around six, maybe six and a half pounds. Let's test that. Ugh, that was a lot of bounds. It says seven pounds, but I got to be honest, I think I bounced an extra pound. Let's see if we can do that again. <laughs> see if you can see where it breaks. Seven pounds. That's a pretty heavy trigger. Now, Devel also manufactured a magazine, but this is not that magazine. This is the magazine that came with the gun. Uh, but this is not the original magazine. This is just a, a factory Colt mag, which if you're familiar with factory Colt mags, then you've seen that patent number before. But when we look up this patent number, we find that this patent number cites another patent, 4446645, which goes back to Kelsey and the Devell Company. And this is this is what their patent was all about, was about this follower, this proprietary design, which this patent had to pay tribute to because it existed prior. Now, when we look at this follower, which also has the Devel name on it, we find that it has a slightly different design to it. It's got this cupped lower lip, which is very interesting. And this one's got a shaved corner. I don't know much about the history of these patents. I don't know much about the history of the company. 
I just thought this was very interesting. I've, I've had these followers in my collection for about 15 years. I found them on eBay and I, I just knew I had to have them. Thanks for watching, people. Make it a great day. Guess what day it is? Huh? Anybody? Julie, hey, guess what day it is? Oh, come on, I know you can hear me. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Leslie, guess what today is? It's hump day. Woo-hoo!